I remember like it was yesterday when this story came out. This is Ari, Gwendolyn and Brynifer. They are in a polyamorous relationship and they all parent Hazel and Sparrow. We have a two-year-old anti-gender baby and a 10-year-old who is non-binary. This story completely shocked everyone. I'm not sure if it's them who invented the term babies, but it definitely was around that time when this video came out that we learned about the non-binary babies, AKA babies. Uh, I don't know, that's about the dumbest thing I ever heard. Many of us wonder if this is healthy for the kids, if it's dangerous for them to be brought up in such an environment. Could it be messing them up? We get an update after two years and that's what we will be talking about today. But let's find out a bit more about this situation. First of all, this polyamorous relationship looks super creepy to me, especially with Gwendolyn and the other one over there. These polyamorous parents let their children choose their gender. And for their oldest child, Hazel, that's neither male nor female. Please tell us how and why you decided to come out as non-binary. Because the pronouns she and he did not fit, non-binary was what I turned to though I do choose to act and look um, more feminine. Can I go down now? Of course. <laughs> and two and a half year old Sparrow has yet to make a choice about their gender. Sparrow, do you want a banana? Yeah. They're anti-gender, but we're using they, them pronouns. Sure, they have anatomy, we understand it, but like that's not indicative of their identity. Okay, this is giving me anger. The older child is non-binary. Did you hear how she talks about her gender situation? It is rehearsed. You know that she did not come up with this. It's an ideology she's following religiously. She chooses to act and present as a girl, but she feels like she, her pronouns didn't fit, so she uses they, them. I'm sure when she said it first time at three or four or whatever, her weirdo parents started clapping and cheering. And guess what? Kid will do anything to make their parents happy to make them proud, to get that positive reaction. That's how they navigate what's right and what's wrong from how we react to it. So if she said, guys, I'm just a girl, she, her, and the parents were like, are you sure? But then when she said, I'm they, them, and got that positive reinforcement, yeah, you are, congratulations on finding yourself. Guess which one the kid will stick with? Someone said, they are so open-minded that their brains fell out. <laughs> In this one, I want to look and dress like a girl, and I am one, but she, her pronouns don't fit me. It's 100% not something a 10 year old comes up with on their own. Exactly. But there is more to the story. It's something that Sparrow's gonna have to figure out and then tell us before we can tell anyone else. Oh. Particularly because it's, you know, something that our parents did and they got it wrong. Oh man, your parents got it wrong, for sure. A lot of people, yeah. they, they say, how will your children know what a boy or a girl are if you don't teach them? Yeah. Or how will they know how to act? There's a lot of assumption that we're raising them without a gender and we're not giving them any information as to what gender is when that's just not the case. <laughs> it's funny because one of the main complaints that people say is children are too young to know their gender. That's why they have to be told what their gender is. And we're like, well, I think we agree on the source information. We agree children don't know yet. But how we respond to that, that fact is very, very different. Yes, we respond very, very different. They are choosing to hide what gender is from their kids. Shouldn't kids know there is female and male, know the main characteristics, know what they are, but also be told that your gender doesn't limit you in life? Why to confuse the kid this way? I don't get it. The parents educate their children differently from regular public schools. Hazel schools themselves. <laughs> Hazel is very led in what they do. I basically just try to keep up with them. So typically, how many hours of study a day do the kids do? Honestly, probably not more than one or two where we're at a table doing what looks like typical academics. The rest of the time, it's a lot more natural, fun learning. So the kids are also isolated. They don't go to school. Well, maybe in that situation, it's better for them. If you are told all your life, you get to decide about everything. You are neither a boy or a girl and you also don't have any real education or educational structure because you decided what and when you learn. Yeah, being in the classroom all of a sudden 
could be a negative experience. Do I think the education system in public schools is perfect? Hell no. But do I think kids need structure and proper guidance in learning? Yes. Whether it's at school or at home. Damn, these kids are growing up with three non-binary trans parents, two dudes in dresses and one woman who pretends to be a man, I think. Or she's neither. The kids are told they are non-binary as well and that they get to decide if they are female or male or none. They also don't go to school, so they have no other influences. And if you followed this story back then, you remember this explosive debate with Piers Morgan. And there's what they want right now. OK, and if Sparrow, when she gets to, say, three or even two, when they can first start to talk, if, she, if her first words mm -hmm. are, I want to be non-binary, or I want to be a boy, or I want to be a girl, would you just respect anything that a two-year-old child would say? You, you accepted a four-year-old's uh, uh, insistence on changing gender. Would you accept a two-year-old? I would accept that that child was exploring. Um, you know, I think that at that age, gender Ari, a child of two is, is, is in no... I'm stone. sorry about... I'm sorry to be the stick in the mud here. A two-year-old kid hasn't got a Scooby-Doo about any of this stuff. The idea that well, you exactly. would literally... The idea Scooby that you would even... Thing. If my the kid said that they wanted to parent, pretend to be Scooby-Doo, I would look, play along let, let you know, just, and follow let, the child. The idea that you as a parent would even countenance the idea that a two-year-old child has any ability to form any serious perception of gender, I think, frankly, I put it to you respectfully, is utterly ridiculous and actually damaging to that well, child. I'll link a full video in the description for you. But the interview happened three years ago. And this year we got an update on how the youngest child is doing today as a non-binary four-year-old. But before we find out, please hit the subscribe button and notifications bell so you stay informed about the new Daily Fredo episodes. Thank you either way for being here and watching my videos. I appreciate you all. Now, back to the update. I'm here, here to everything. Curious. Imaginative. Okay, where do you all go? Let's go to the moon. Playful. Okay. Sparrow is your typical four-year-old. It's been amazing. It's been very different from raising my first to, to raising this one. Arlo Dennis keeps Sparrow's biological sex a secret, instead opting to allow Sparrow to figure out their own gender when ready. But in our home, they're really just allowed to do whatever feels good to them. So they're still using they, them. But sometimes they'll be like, eh, maybe I want to be a girl. And it's like, well, what does a girl mean to you? And you know, the, the answers are always different. What does the girl mean to you? Today I feel I'm a boy. Today I feel I'm a girl. Do those people not realize how messed up is that? Not long ago, I was talking about the importance of raising little boys with structure and purpose. Boys should strive to become protectors, to be leaders of their families, to be strong, strong-minded, responsible. There are hormones that play a role here, a huge role. The same with girls. They should know that as women, they can have children in the future. That's what their bodies are designed to do. But with those, we also emphasize that gender is not a limitation. Anyway, let's continue watching. It works for now, but with kindergarten in the not too distant future. When we get to that point of gender divide in the classroom, I'm really hoping that Sparrow will be empowered enough to be like, I feel like a girl, so I'm gonna do the girl line, or I feel like a boy and I'm gonna do the boy line, or I feel like I'm Sparrow, but today I'm going to pick this line that, that works for me. Arlo decided to take this parenting approach after their own journey with gender. Arlo is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. And so for me, being non-binary is just breaking that mold and living a very individual human experience rather than trying to adhere to a bunch of rules or protocols for one role or another. Translation, I feel I'm messed up, so I will make sure to mess up my kid to make myself feel better. Honestly, I hope the kids will turn out okay. I wish them all the best. Obviously, they are living this life led by their parents. And we know that this family is not a separate case. They are not the only ones. There are many examples out there. Here is one of them. Let's see. When our child Zoomer was born in 2016, my partner Brent and I decided to raise them without assigning a gender. We didn't disclose their reproductive anatomy to people who didn't need to know. We used the gender neutral pronouns they, them, their until Zoomer could tell us what pronouns fit best. And we taught Zoomer about bodies, gender, identity, and expression in an expansive and inclusive way. We wanted to hold space for the possibility that Zoomer could be intersex, transgender, or non-binary. And we were committed to protecting them from experiencing sexism and early childhood. Zoomer wore all the clothes, played with all the toys, and got to experience a childhood free of gender stereotypes. Around Zoomer's fourth birthday, 
He told us that he's a boy and that he loves he, him pronouns. Zoomer knows who he is and understands that gender is not binary and that his body doesn't define his destiny. We call this gender creative parenting and there's resources and an amazing community waiting for you if you wanna learn more. I still fail to understand how knowing you're a boy or a girl prevents you from living a full childhood or playing with toys of your choice. And another thing is these parents are saying, oh, in case our child was transgender in the future, we will refer to them, they, them. Don't, to be transgender, you need to transition from one to the other, right? So you need to know that, oh, I'm a boy, I behave like a boy, I act like a boy, I, I live like a boy. If it doesn't feel right, I'm going to transition. If you don't live as either, you transition to what from what? You're not trans. Anyway, let's look at some comments. Where is it? I lost my comments. Great story for when he visits the therapist. <laughs> And this one, poor kid, having crazy parents doesn't usually end well. But as usual, I want to know what you guys think. Do you think babies and non-binary families are onto something? Should we raise a genderless society? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please like and share it and subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications to never miss another Daily Fredo episode. Don't forget to check out my Patreon account in my channel's profile. Thanks for watching. That's all for today. Have a good one. I think, frankly, I put it to you respectfully, is utterly ridiculous and actually damaging to that.